Praise broke out in the place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You know, God's been really working on so many people. I, y'all only got to hear all the testimonies that we hear throughout the week and what God is doing. It's just amazing. And there's an amazing young man that uh, he came to me a few weeks ago and said, I've got something I would like to share with you, Pastor. And so, man, he poured his heart out to me. And he said, I believe this is a word I should share for the church body. And I said, I believe so. I believe it is. I think it's a word that's going to touch a lot of hearts today. So, uh, if you would welcome Reggie Sutton. He comes and shares his testimony this morning. He thinks it's summertime. All right. well, that's just like Texas, though. It was, what, cold? What, two weeks ago, we are all frozen in. As soon as we seen a little sun, you got to put the shorts, like, put the shirt back on, go out, all right? Uh, for your, those who don't know me, uh, my name is Reggie, or Reginald Sutton. Uh, been going to this church for man, somewhere around seven, seven or eight years. Um, the son of Elder Sutton and my Latanya Sutton that couldn't be here today. I know they're watching on live stream, um, moving, and so a lot of stress and a lot of y'all know how it is when it comes to moving. And so it's not one of my favorites. So just keep them lifted up in prayers as they go through this process as well. Uh, but I wanted to share. Uh, my testimony, I'm trying to keep it within the time that Pastor gave me. Forgive me, Pastor, if I go over because I do have, I just want to pour my heart out to you guys because I really do believe that this place is about to take off, okay? Not in this city, not in just in the church. It's going to start here in the church, but it's going to go out to San Angelo and further, okay? Um, I would just like to start off with, um, for a long time, uh, before I had met my wife, I struggled with an addiction to pornography, and it was something that I battled for years and years, and so much so that I tried my hardest, at least I thought I tried my hardest, to overcome it, to get rid of it, but somehow I just found myself going back, and I was just, I was, I was so mad at myself. I felt like every time I, you know, struggled with it, that I was too shameful to even present myself to God. I felt like it was done with me. I almost convinced myself that I wasn't going to get through it. That I wasn't. That I wasn't going to get over it. And you know, I shared it with my parents and thank God for them. Most importantly, thank God for my wife. Because it was at one point I really feared for my marriage. And I was going to ruin it. And it wasn't the devil, it was me. It was my own selfish decisions. It was not me changing the way I thought that led me down this road. But I remember I was driving, um, I had been driving for, U for UPS for a little while. And I went through such depression that I was like, man, if I don't get through this, I don't know where I'm going to go. I'm going to lose my wife. I'm going to lose whatever God had planned for me. And literally, as I was driving down the road, I heard in the most clear voice, God said, you don't know me at all. And I was like, whew, okay. I had to challenge myself. I had to challenge myself. Get to know God's goodness. And so in the morning, so I usually read a devotion that I'm going to bring up. Uh, it's called Refined. And I do this every day. I just try to find a plan. I got the Bible app. And uh, I go through it just thinking of, Lord, what do you want me to look up? Place it on my heart. And I found it. It's called Refined. Finding joy in the midst of the fire. And the very first thing, the very first thing I laid my eyes on, it says, it is utterly and critically necessary that you know who God is. Yeah. Because man fell when he lost his right concept of God. If you do not embrace a correct definition of who God is, you may fall into depression, bitterness, and sin following the devastation of a trial 
we may fall into losing hope, losing direction, and perhaps even losing faith if you don't know him in all his fullness and goodness. Oh, that spoke to me. I mean, if there's not confirmation from God, I don't know what that is. And so from then on, I said, bump that. I'm turning off the television. I'm turning off the phone. I'm going to get into God's word. I'm going to start seeking and, 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 and receiving all his goodness that he has for me. Because I can sit here and say, yes, I believe Jesus Christ died for me. But if I don't put my faith into action, I can fall into what that just talked about. And so, man, from then, that point on, I looked my wife dead in the eye. After the so many times I hurt her, I said, look, when I told you I was done, it was more so you could hear it and feel better about me, but I didn't believe it. But I said, I look you dead in your eye right now and say it is gone, <laughs> that I am free. I am walking in freedom. I said, I am walking in freedom, and I'm not going back. I'm pressing forward. I'm sorry, I'm choking up right now. <laughs> and then from that moment on, I, I started just, I started just praising God. I just started receiving it. I mean, you couldn't, nothing could touch me. I felt, I felt on the high, but I told pastor, I said, sometimes when you, differences or when things come in your life that come from the good, you get on a high, but sometimes that high comes down. Who are you when, that, when it comes yeah. down? Right. You've got a chance to go back, or you've got a chance to press forward and continue to hunger and thirst for the word of God. And so it just falls into a place with what Pastor had been preaching about since the beginning of this year, celebration. And I was like, I said, I'm just celebrating life. I'm going to continue to celebrate life in every aspect. And I mean, I think, but we had a great New Year's party with her family. Uh, we celebrated uh, a wedding in January for Lance. I celebrated a, a wedding a couple weeks ago for my cousin-in-law. Um, just everything had just, had just been falling into place, and I've just been living and loving life that, you know, me and my wife got married last August, and uh, I had planned to get a huge wedding. Um, it was just me and my parents, or and her parents, uh, here at the church. I, I was there. And, and pastor, who <laughs> ministered. <laughs> Forgive me, Pastor. And uh, we had a plan to have the, a huge celebration this August, but um, that got postponed because as we were celebrating life, little did I know that God was going to give us a life to celebrate. So I'm going to put her on the spot. If y'all have never seen my wife, will you please stand up, please? That's my beautiful wife, who is, um, what, today, 10 weeks and two days pregnant. Uh, Talk about the blessing. Uh, and if you didn't know, you probably heard it from my dad already. He just can't keep it to himself. He has probably told a lot of you guys in the church already. Uh, but we wanted to announce it to you guys because it started here in the church. It started with the change. It was what God was waiting for me to press through that he has something on the other side waiting for me. And so I give credit to my wife because uh, leading into this next thing, um, this is where I believe that this church and the church in general is going to take off, okay? Uh, for a long time, when I went through that depression, a lot of that was, uh, I'm, I'm a gym goer. My passion is lifting weights. I find myself, I find I'm just locked in, I'm in a zone, when I can lift the weight, no matter what's going on. You know, tough day, good day, what doesn't matter. That's where I find, that's where I get my separation and I find myself. But, you know, driving for UPS, guys, I started in the summer, and I remember telling my, my wife, I was like, you know what, I'm different. I'm gonna be different. Uh, you know, a lot of those guys at UPS who drive for 10, 11 hours a day in the heat of the summer, um, they don't find themselves at a gym later on that day or earlier that morning. You know, so I started driving, because I was like, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be different. Well, <laughs> 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 let me tell you, it's different. I can understand. <laughs> I can see why. I can definitely see why that, you know, it's hard for them to get to the gym. And what I love about my wife, guys, she's no sugar coater, all right? She does not sugarcoat things. She tells me straight up how it is. You know, I'll come for comfort. She, boom, hits me with something different. I'm like, huh, you're making me be responsible now. <laughs> I was just looking for some comfort, you know? And, you know, I think it was probably about mid-January. She said, you're going to the gym today. You're going with me. I was like, all right. 
went on a Saturday, and then uh, I ended up, I think, taking some days off because I just my mindset wasn't different still. It wasn't different. It wasn't how I thought it was going to be before I started. And uh, I remember as I was driving one night, I was like, look, the only way I'm going to be able to get through this is if I go at, at night. I'm not going to be able to get up in the morning. All right, I got to find a solution. And so I ended up uh, starting to go at night. And I think two days in, man, I was just like, man, I feel good out here as I'm delivering. I'm like, man, why didn't I do this before? Like, I should have I been doing this. But more importantly, I found myself mentally. It changed. It switched. And I was more not lifting because it was, I like to feel good. I like to get stronger or anything like that. You know, I was doing bodybuilding a couple years ago and stuff like that. And that's how, why I was lifting. But now I lift because I find myself. It's where I can mentally get away and gather my thoughts, and, but more importantly, give God the glory for my health. Yes. Okay? And so that's where I want to lead, because I think this church, coming up in the summer, I want to start a life group, maybe hopefully a little bit before the summer starts. I'm putting something together. It's called Christ Fit. Okay? It's called Christ Fit. But understand, it's called Christ Fit first. Okay. My dad used to always tell me when I was a kid growing up playing sports, student athlete, what comes first? Student athlete. So just like this, Christ and then Christ fit comes first. Okay. Um, so how I want to just real quick try to break that down. Um, I want to try to connect the physical fitness and our spiritual fitness. Okay. And that's going to help us change the way we think. Okay. Physical training, what happens most is that, well, first of all, what this is going to be a boast about or uh, mostly about is growth. We need growth in this church, okay? We can't stay complacent. We can't come to Christ, get saved, get water baptized, and then go out and just keep everything to ourselves, okay? Sure. We got to grow, and we got to continue to spread that to people all around us, at work, at home, wherever you go, okay? So that's where it starts, okay? And some people try to wonder how you connect physical and spiritual fitness together, okay? So if you go and live, the only way I'm going to get physically stronger or growth within my physical body is if I pick up a weight. But if I do one rep, two reps, and I put it down, I'm staying complacent. and I'm not challenging myself. Don Babin talked about it last week. We got to put ourselves, uh, push ourselves out of our comfort zone, okay? So the only way that this is going to grow is if I lift that weight, Okay, and it starts to become uncomfortable. All right, pain starts to set in. Okay, and so now you have a choice am I going to put that weight down and not grow, or am I going to push past that point, push past that breaking wall, think differently, and push for those extra two or maybe three reps? Only then will I see growth in my physical stature. Okay, but the thing is, is that spiritual is the same way. All right, God puts us through life challenges, devastations, trials, and he puts us in uncomfortable situations, and how we respond to that situation will determine whether we're going to grow in our faith or whether we're just going to stay hidden. Okay? If we're going to stay hidden, then who are we going to save? Ourselves? To me, that sounds selfish. Okay? And so, and I also want you to see how physically, when you live, or whatever you want to do, whether you bike, whether you run, whatever you know, your activity is that you love going for a walk, okay? It brings me peace of mind. It brings me peace. I wake up differently. I'm in a better focus than I ever was before. But just how I s- tried to seek God's goodness, I have never been in a better mentally state before because physically fit and spiritually fit it's going to help you become mentally fit. And that's where it all starts, okay? We got to mentally transform ourselves in order for us to grow, in order for us to feel better, okay? And look, I'm no certified trainer, all right? But I am certified as a Christian to know that my body does not belong to me. It belongs to God, all right? I'm not a certified nutritionist either, okay? But I am certified to know what I put in my body, okay? Whether it be food, okay? Whether it be what's on television, whether it be social media or the people I hang out with, I am certified to do that, 
okay? And so I'm telling you guys, just, just bear with me, give me some months. Um, I'm gonna put this together and, and we're just gonna push and, and we're gonna press forward, okay? Um, because sometimes we want God's blessing, okay? We're waiting for him to give us our blessing, all right? When in actuality, he's waiting on us. Just like he was waiting on me to push past that wall to break it down, there was a blessing on the other side. But you have a choice to make. You have a choice whether you're going to stay complacent and you're going to live a you know, subpar Christian life, okay? Or you can grow and you can sell, uh, excel and God can put you in situations that you're not used to, but that's going to make you a better person. Your faith is going to become stronger and then you're going to be able to go out and, and just feel better look better okay and that's the whole point behind this all right because <clears throat> in the end i do want to help you try to connect and, ch and and channel that inner athlete that you may never have never thought you had okay i want to help you continue to push through uh um you know workouts or or, or your fitness activity because like i said i'm not offering a like a four-month program that's going to help you Okay, lose weight, do that or do this or whatever, okay? I'm trying to offer you something that's gonna help change your life internally, that you're gonna consistently be able to push forward, even though it may have been a hard day at work, I can still, I gotta go to the gym, I gotta, I gotta go run, I gotta go get a walk, I need time away to mentally gather myself and connect with God, okay? Because it's time to seek his goodness. By allowing his goodness and his faithfulness, it'll help you discover the person he saw you as and not who you saw yourself as okay because i want you to go to work and now someone else is looking at you and they're saying man there's just something different about her i don't know maybe it's the four sizes and pants that she went down to because man she's just physically something's different about her but they're gonna be like no there's something else different about her Something, something spiritually is different about her because she just went through this, she just went through that, but for some reason, she's not withered. She's not withered at all, or he's not withered at all, okay? All those trials and all those devastations that you're going through, you're not moved, all right? You're standing fit because I got God's goodness on me, all right? I got his faithfulness on me. I'm walking down the street, I'm looking real good. I mean, I got it all. I got it all, but that just, it's just, but that didn't start because, or it started because of the way you, you changed the way you thought, okay? It all starts with changing the way you think, and guys, just please give me some time. Look forward to it. I'm going to have a Facebook page as well that I'm going to share with um, through the church, and we're just going to continue to press forward in God's goodness, okay, and keep continue to seek in God's faithfulness, because like I said, he just has something waiting for you on the other side. Okay, he has something waiting for you on the other side, but we got to continue to push down those walls, okay, that are holding us back. All right, whatever you're going through that's holding you firm and holding you back, let it go. Or seek God's goodness. Amen. Seek God's goodness, because I'm telling you, it would transform your lives, okay? And it's going to start here in the church, it starts here with us. Okay, and then we're going to go out into our jobs. Okay, and then we're going to go out into the city, and then we're going to go out into the world because we need to be active, we need to be healthy, we need to be spiritually fit to receive everything that God's given us so that you can give it to that person that doesn't believe. Okay, so I thank Pastor uh, for, for allowing me to share my testimony with you guys. I really believe this is going to really transform lives and, most importantly, save lives. Okay, so thank y'all. Amen. Don't pull a muscle. <laughs> Thanks, Pam. Okay. 
Father, we thank you for Reggie. And yes, Lord. We thank you for touching him. Praise, him. praise you for what you put in his heart to do and for him to breathe. Lord, I pray protection over them uh, as he goes for the dream that you put in his heart. You know, the enemy would like nothing better to do than pull the rug out from under you in your dream. And we're just praying against that. And that you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. I'm excited to start a new sermon series. Uh, it's called Power. And every one of the letters uh, has to do with the topic that I'm going to preach on. And the P is for position. O is for obedience. Uh, w is for our words. E is kind, of, is kind of a challenge, but it was really what I, God put on my heart. It's the ecclesia. It's the assembly of the church of, uh, the church of uh, God. And then the R ends up on Resurrection Sunday. The R, there's power in the resurrection. So that's the next five weeks. I'll be gone one week for a, a vacation. We're going to go out and see our kids in California for one. I'll miss one Sunday, and Elder Sutton will be preaching on that Sunday. So in the next six weeks, I'll be preaching five sermons on power. And uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians 2 and uh, hold your finger there. And then you can also flip over to Second Chronicles 20 and and going to talk about our position. You know, there's power in our position. You know, the world has an idea of what position is supposed to be and what a position gives somebody. We have people in, pla in, in places of position, in politics, in, in government, uh, in sports. We have people in all sorts of positions of power that really do abuse that power because they don't really know that, that their power that they're operating in is, God, is worldly power. It's not godly power. So this morning, we're going to talk about our position before Christ and our position in Christ, there's no better scripture. Okay, here we're going. Have what? Mm. Sorry. But I don't think that has anything to do with that. It was so good in, in when we practiced earlier. Now I sound like I'm, hello. Check, check, one, two, one, two. Are we good? Okay. Ephesians 2, let's just go ahead and dive into the scripture. Uh, verse 1, and you, this is from the New King James Version, and you, he, that's Jesus, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as others, as the others. The first thing I want you to see this morning, we're not going to dwell here very much, is, is our position before Christ. Before Christ came in, Jesus uh, said, or Paul says in this passage, that we conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh. Uh, we fulfill the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we're by nature children of wrath. He's including himself in that, but we're all included in that, right? Right? Before you became a Christian, before you came to know Jesus Christ, we all were led by our flesh. We were all swayed by our flesh. We were all led by the world. And the, world's, the world is, is who conformed. We conformed to the world. We didn't conform to Christ. Ephesians 6.12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So we could talk all day about all the wickedness in the world and all the people that are the bad people that are in positions of authority, but guys are just doing what they know to do. You know, you, you, we can complain, oh, I, I can't believe they did this. I can't believe they made this law. I can't believe they said this is okay, that, uh, and, and that, that, that law that, the, the, that was voted by the, the House about the LGBTQ that is going to, will destroy. I mean, if it comes in, if the Senate passes this, listen, it will, it, it will attack the Christian faith more than any other bill has ever been put out there. And if you've got a phone, if you want to call or email your senator, and, and I know the senators that we have are probably against that bill, but they're going to come in if, if this bill passes. And I'm telling you, this, things, these things are happening right before our very eyes. Do you all understand this? I'm not speaking Democrat, Republican. I'm just saying these things, this wickedness is happening in our country. There, if this passes, they will come to me and say, Pastor, if this is a homosexual couple and you don't decide, and they come to you and they want you to marry them and you refuse, you could go to jail for that. Or somebody comes in here and they, they have a record in, and they have a bad pass in, in, uh, 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 of 
you know, a record of, of homosexuality or pedophilia or something like that. And they say, well, we want to go to work in your children's area. And you can't say, well, no, because or you can't do that. No, because they'll say you are being uh, discrimination, You're discriminating against people. You've got to treat everybody the same. See, it comes under this thing called the Equality Act, but it's anything but equal. It's, a, it's, a, it's equal for the people that they want it to be equal for, but it's not equal for everybody. Ah. We, we've got to be, we, listen guys, we've got to be on our toes, our spiritual toes. Because these things are coming and they're coming in the guise of something good because it's called the Equality Act. Such a farce. Before Christ, guys, that was us. Oh, that's good. This sounds good. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's be led by our flesh. That's before Christ. Okay? Now let's look at verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Hallelujah. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places. Where? In Christ Jesus. Say, in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Say it. In Christ Jesus. You're going to have to get this this morning. If you don't get anything, you need to get this in Christ Jesus. For by grace, say grace. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. You can't earn it. It said it's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. You can't earn. You can't work hard enough. You can't be good enough to enter in the kingdom of heaven. It's by the grace of God. It's by your faith that you put in the cross in Jesus Christ. That's the only way you get in. That's it. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Say it, in Christ Jesus. Four good works which God prepared before and that we should walk in them. This is our position in Christ this morning. We are in Christ Jesus. Colossians 1.13 says, He, Jesus, has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Isn't that beautiful? He has, he has delivered us. He's taken us from darkness to the Son of His love, the kingdom of light. He has conveyed us. You know, you know that word conveyed? There's another scripture in, uh, there's another passage that uses a word that's very similar to conveyed, and it's in Hebrews 11.5. I want to read it for you. It says, by faith, Enoch was taken away. That's that word conveyed, translated, transported. Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. But for before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Enoch was, see, he didn't taste death. He didn't go, he didn't die. He wasn't, he didn't go to the, take his last breath and he, he was transported to heaven. He was conveyed to heaven. But did you know the same thing happens for us as believers? Do you believe that? I'm going to tell you, I'll show it to you. It's in, it's in John chapter 11, verse 26. When it was about Lazarus and Martha and Mary and all. You know the story. Go back and read it if you don't. And he says to, to Martha, he said, whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. If you believe in him, if he is in you, you shall never die. And everybody goes, well, I just went to so-and-so's funeral last week. They died. No, they didn't. If they, didn't. if they knew Jesus Christ, they didn't die. They just took one breath here, the next breath there. They were conveyed into heaven. They were transported in heaven. Right. That word also means taken from one place and to, taken to another place. So when you give your life to Christ, you're taken from one place, the world, and you're placed into Christ. That's what it means to be in Christ. And so there's power in that position when we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Ephesians 2, 6, I want to read that again. It says, and God, or it's, and God raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He, listen, isn't that amazing? You are now seated right here in these, in these chairs at, at Freedom Fellowship. Say, I'm seated. I'm seated. In a really cool chair. Really cool. It's really soft. In Christ Jesus. Now, see, you're seated here, but you're seated there, too. You're not just seated here. You're, how many of you are a citizen of, of America? You're an American citizen. But you're also a citizen of heaven. You have dual citizenship. And I'm going to have to tell you that that one's better. Okay? That one's better. 
We have dual citizenship, but we're also seated here, but we're seated there. And, and you think, well, that, how does that even happen? How can we be seated here and be seated with Christ? Because he said we sit with him. He, he made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You know, we sing the song, I raise a hallelujah. Y'all like that song? I love that song, but there's a line in that song that just grabs me. It says, I raise a hallelujah in the middle of a mystery. How many of you know that walking with Jesus, being in Christ, is a mystery? Did you know there's so many mysteries in the Bible? We want to figure God out. We want to have it all laid out in black and white. And God says, no, 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 no. I want there's some, there has to be some mysteries because with the mystery, you have to exercise F-A-I-T-H. Right? You have to exercise faith. If in the middle of the mystery, all these mysteries, let me, let me read this to you. You know, we talk about a man and woman, they get married, right? Okay, and what does it say in Ephesians 5.31? It says, for this reason, I clap. See, when I had my microphone, I didn't clap. I clap all the time now. That's wild. <laughs> if you have, yeah. For this reason, a man shall leave his mother, his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery. Come on, follow with me. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. So when you said, I do, to your spouse and the, and, and the pastor, like we did here, when, when he says, I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Reggie Sutton. You have changed your position, right? You went from single, strutting around, single guy, making his own decisions, to married guy. Hopefully not strutting around, making his own decisions. <laughs> See, when you change positions, when you go from married, from single to married, you change your position. And all of a sudden, you're not thinking all about yourself anymore. You're thinking about your spouse. And if you're not doing that, you need to come to me for some mar marital counseling because you've changed your position. And he said, listen, like a husband and wife, when they come together, he, said it, he says, here's the mystery, but I, I'm speaking about Christ in the church. So when we come to Christ, we are the church, right? And we are married to the bridegroom. That's Jesus Christ. We have changed positions. And it's a mystery, but it's true. We have to start getting this in our spirit, man, that we are no, we're no longer the same. We're not solo. We're not doing this thing solo, guys. Jesus addressed this in John 17. If you want to really find the Lord's Prayer, look at John 17. It's really the Lord's Prayer. The other one, he was teaching them how to pray. It was a model prayer. But this is the Lord's prayer. This is Jesus' prayer. He starts out in John 17. He's praying for himself. Then he begins to pray for his disciples. You know, he's about to go to the cross. So he prays for himself. He prays for his disciples. And then the third part of that prayer, I love that part of the prayer because I'm in the Bible. You're in the Bible. He's praying for us. Let's read it. John 17, 20. Jesus says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Reggie's talking about it. People are going to believe in Jesus through your word, through your actions, through your testimony. People will come to know Jesus Christ. There's no greater thrill than leading somebody to Jesus Christ. There's no, unless, even if it's just come to church and they come in and they walk the aisle and they give their life to Christ and you get to see them, you get to stand up here and you watch them go into the water. It's a thrill, isn't it? Because you had a part in it. But I was thinking about this. Twelve guys, or actually whittled down to 11, but 11 guys... And then 120, and then 3,000, because of their faithfulness over a 2,000 year period of time. 2,000 years, that word came to you and to me. And that word saved you. Jesus Christ is the word, right? Yes. And he came in and he saved us. And he says this I do not pray for these alone, but those who will be believing me through their word. He's talking about the disciples, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me. Now, I want you to get the phraseology here. You, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us. Say, in us. In us. And here's the, here's the kicker. That the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given to them, that they may be one just as we are one. Is God into unity or what? Yes. I in them, and you in me. He, he says, listen, maybe you didn't get it this time. 
Okay, I want to tell you again, I and them, and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. The third thing you need to see this morning is with position comes authority and responsibility. That's why I wanted to sing the song Champion. It, it really speaks to this. It, it's a, really a doctrinally sound song. He's talking about the authority. I have the authority that Jesus has given me. Listen, when, when you step into your new position, you get new responsibilities. How many of you ever got a promotion at work and you got the promotion and all of a sudden more responsibilities came, right? You thought, well, I'm, I'm going to get a raise. With a raise comes more responsibility. And a new position usually comes more responsibility. But see also with that new position, maybe at work or wherever you're at, comes a new authority. You, you're not who you used to be. You, you've been, you've been uh, uh, just a hired hand, so to speak, and all of a sudden you're the manager. Now you're telling people what to do. You have this authority. And then one day you work your way up, you become the owner of the business, and you really have authority, don't you? But, boy, you have more and more and more responsibility than you can ever imagine. And that's why it's kind of nice to kind of work your way up. Okay? So God says if I'm going to give you a new position, I'm also going to give you authority in that position. And then I'm also going to give you a responsibility. See, a lot of people like authority, but they don't like responsibility. Right. See, I, I believe that there are so many churches out there, denominational churches, that don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit because they don't want to have to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They don't want to be responsible for it. You know, if you don't believe that we're supposed to lay our hands on the sick and they recover, then you won't. Oh, no, no, no. Just go to the doctor. Just go to the doctor. No, we don't do that. We don't believe that. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. That happened. That passed away. So let me just read our commission, Mark 16, 15. And Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to what? Every creature. That means your dog. <laughs> I don't know. He who believes in... I've seen some dogs that were lost. <laughs> Demonized. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly like the water in San Angelo, <laughs> it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. And you lay hands on the sick, they don't recover. Do you just stop laying hands on the sick? No, you keep laying hands on the sick. You keep praying. You keep believing. That's our responsibility. He's called us to do that. If you don't like that commission, here's another one, okay? Matthew 28, 18, that Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Now, if all authority has been given to Jesus and we are in Christ, Kristen, and Christ is in us, do we have the same authority? Do we have the same authority? Okay, some people will say, well, you know, that was just for the disciples back then. Then they just make you... Just. He says, oh, go therefore, say go. I like how Don put it. The word go means to leave the place that you're at and go somewhere else, right? He says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's what we do. Except for the Son today, except maybe at the end of the service. Teaching them, Jesus said, to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, what all did Jesus command them? He said to raise the dead, cast out demons. Lay your hands on the sick. He said, over and over, love your neighbor, love your enemies. He said, I want you to teach, and I don't want... And listen, he didn't just say to teach them. He said to live it throughout scriptures. He said, we have to live what he's called. He said, if you love, if he said, if you, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. Amen. It's an action. Faith without works is D-E-A dead. Yeah, D-E-A-D, dead. We have not been conveyed into Christ. We have not been put into Christ so we could do nothing. We all have authority. We all have responsibility. Amen? John 14, 12. I'm just going to touch on a couple more verses. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that, he, that I do, he will do also. And Jesus said, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. He was talking about, if you go up, read that in context, he said, I'm about to leave. I'm sending the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, who is Christ in you, can start living in you and through you, and you can do the greater works than I've done. 
That's a pretty big responsibility. But see, he doesn't say, you just do it on your own. He said, I'm going to do it in you, through you, because I am in you. Let's go back to the very first verse I read of the first passage, Ephesians 2.10. Because a lot of people go, well, I'm saved and I just don't want to bother anybody. I'm just going to get my, I'm just going to go to heaven and I'm just going to be real quiet about it. And I'm a very private person. You ever heard of those people? I'm just a private about my faith. Aren't you glad somebody wasn't private about their faith when they told you about Jesus? Amen. Well, they're just a very private person. Baloney. For we are his workmanship. You know what another word for workmanship is? We are his masterpiece. We are his masterpiece. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. He didn't just leave it there. He says, which God prepared before and that we should walk in them. He's already got the works. He's got it laid out for you. You wonder why you run into so-and-so and they have a prayer need. You think God didn't orchestrate that? He said, I've prepared good works before, beforehand so that when you see them, you'll walk in them. You'll obey me. You'll lay your hands on the sick. You'll encourage that person that's down and out. Greater works, he said, that we would do. And to do the greater works, we have got to know who we are in Christ. Now, there's a great story that summarizes, that summarizes what I'd like to sh share with you today and, and kind of bring it home. Uh, it's found in 2 Chronicles 20. It's a great story. You need to go back and read it and read a couple of chapters beforehand and find out about Jehoshaphat. I wonder if his nickname was Fat. <laughs> no? Uh, hey, Fatty! They had to have nicknames in the Bible because their names are so long. J-Fat. I don't know. But Jehoshaphat... And that's about as good as I'm going to get pronouncing it. And the rest of these names, I'm just going for it, okay? Um, he was a king of Judah, and there was three armies that were coming against Judah. And these are three armies that God had had earlier and said, don't touch these people. Uh, and, and they had lived with them. And, but all of a sudden, they decided they want to attack Judah. They want to attack Jerusalem, okay? And now he's already been in a skirmish before where he almost lost his life. And he's like, like I'm not... I'm not really sure about this thing. I, I, God, he said, he said, God, uh, these are our, our enemies, and why did you allow them to be our enemies? And why are you allowing them to come against us? And he was just like kind of all, all this stuff was going on in his head, and he said, I don't know what to do about this. But then he said, he kind of came, 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 to his, came to his senses, you know? You just had to come to your senses, and, and you, you're worried about, fearful about some things, but all of a sudden you have, you have clarity. And he said, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll, I will call a fast. We'll, our people will fast. And now I will call on God. Good idea, right? Really a great idea. So he called on the people of God and he began to pray. And then, so the fourth thing I want you to see this morning, when, and, and when we find our position, one of our main, main focuses or one places that we should be in our position in Christ is a prayer position, a position of prayer. In, in verse 6 in 2 Chronicles 20, I'm not going to read all those verses. It's just a lot. He says this in verse 6. Oh, this is Jehoshaphat. Oh, Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? Do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? See, sometimes we've got to come back to that place of God. I've got myself all worked up. I've got myself all worked up about this situation, this circumstance in my life. I don't like this. I don't like where I am. How did I get here? And then God says, uh, have you forgot who I am? Have you forgot the times that I've rescued you? Have you forgot the times that my power was evident in your life? Have you forgot who I am in you? Amen. See, we have to be reminded of that, don't we? How many of you have been in that place? You like you just got worried and you fret and you just don't want to give up. You, I mean, you even some sometimes you even contemplate suicide. You just says, I want to get out of this world. And God says, Wait a minute. I live in you. The power of the most high God, I live in you. You've got authority over whatever's attacking you. Wake up, grow up, put on your big boy pants. Quit whining and complaining and take your position. Because I have taken my position in you. 
When you accepted me as your Lord and Savior, Christ in you, the hope of glory. We sometimes just need to be reminded of who God is in us. And then verse 12, 2 Chronicles 20, it says, Oh, our God, will you not judge them? He's talking about these armies. For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Have you ever felt that way? Oh, we just don't have any power against what is coming against us. But look what he says. This is the most key thing that he says. He says, Nor do we know what to do. How many of you don't know what to do about a situation in your life this morning? Raise your hands. You don't know what to do. Okay. All right. God's going to tell you what to do. But you've got to do this first. He said, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. See, your eyes on the circumstance, not on Christ. Your eyes on the situation, not on the Savior. And you've got to get your eyes off of all that, and you've got to get your eyes on him, and you can actually look inward because he lives right there in you. And it's a mystery, but he's there. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. That fifth thing I want to share with you is have a position of honesty. He was just being honest. Sometimes we're so prideful we won't even, we won't admit to God, man, this is scaring me. Oh, God did not give me a spirit of fear, but power and love. And we can quote all those verses all day long, that's fine. But sometimes we just need to say, God, I'm afraid. I don't know what to do. Lord, I, I feel like I've put myself in a corner. I've done so. I've sinned. And Lord, you know, the shame and the guilt's coming in. And he said, thank you for being honest. Now let's see what we can do about this situation. Get your eyes back on me, Harold. Get your eyes back on me, Alyssa. Get your eyes back on me, Yolanda. Get them off whatever it was that was getting your, getting your eyes off of me. Get them back on me. So he said, I don't know what to do. We got three armies that are coming after us. Three armies. But my eyes are on you. Verse 13. Isn't this a great? Well, you're going to get some. It's gonna, it gets better. Now all of Judah with their little ones, their wives, their children stood before the Lord. And then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel that he was a prophet, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Adoniah. <laughs> See, I'm reading it fast, so you can't, no, he didn't say that right. A Levite of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all of you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you. So he's calling on the prophets, all right? Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Amen. That's over and over in Scripture. Amen. Tomorrow go down against him. Now, you've got to stop here because he said, now the battle's not yours, but you've got to go down against him. Yeah. See, we want to say, well, God, I'm just going to go and you fight that battle for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm just going to stay in the bedroom. <laughs> I'm going to just hide away until everything's good and you come and you tell me when it's all. No, he said, you've got you to exercise some faith and go down there to them. Yeah. See, we have to put our faith together with, 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 the, with what God's word, what he's speaking to you. If you had a prophetic word, you've got, to put, you've got to put your faith with that prophetic word that's been given to you. You have to put some action to it. Oh, God, I just needed a new job and I'm just going to wait. Send me an email. Or just maybe a messenger. Hey, yes, Mr. Watkins, we have a new job for you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. No, he might say go apply. He might say go back to school. He might say go study. He might say that's not the right job for you. Where am I? Let's see. He said, do not be dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. Do some action. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz. Have you ever been to Ziz? <laughs> and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. And you will not need to fight in this battle. You will not need to fight in this battle. But this is what Ed tells you. He tells you the prophets telling Jehoshaphat to do. He says, position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against him for the Lord is with you. Woo! 
See, that's a word for you this morning. That's a word for me this morning. Position yourselves. That's the, first, the sixth thing I want you to see this morning. Position yourselves. You see, I can't go and position Pam. I can't position her for me. She has to be positioned in herself. She has to make her own decision. You've got to make your own decision if you're going to position yourself. Quit waiting for somebody else to do it for you. You've got to make these decisions, church. Oh, but I don't have this. I'm not worthy. I'm not. No, quit, quit speaking that crap over yourself. Woo, I said crap. Quit speaking that stuff over yourself. Speak life over yourself. Say, I have the authority. I know, I'm sorry. I made this, the Lord just dropped this in my spirit. A lot of times right before I wake up and, and then before I can get to my pen and pad or whatever, uh, I might go get coffee or something to go to the restroom and, and I'm like, Lord, what was it you told me? Because it was really good. You ever done that? Yeah. Or like a dream? Like, I don't, that was a good dream. What was it? <laughs> but he dropped this in my spirit and it's not profound, but it was profound to me at the moment. But Because we, we preach and teach about our identity in Christ all the time. And that's basically what this sermon is about, our identity in Christ. In Christ. But he, the Lord said, tell them, before you can know who you are in Christ, you have to know who Christ is in you. Yeah. And how do you do that? You get in His Word. Before you can know who you are in Christ, which is important, you have to know who Christ is in you. You have to know Christ. And the only, how many of you have a good friend, a best friend? How did you get to know? Are they their best friend because you met them yesterday or last week? Or you spent two or three hours with them? Do they become your best friend after you spent a week with them? No. They, they're, they're your best friend after they walk through the stuff with you, after they walk through the fire with you. After they've lived life with you, after they heard you moan and groan and whine, and you know what? And they stick with you closer than a brother, and you go, This is my best friend. You would not believe the things that they stuck with me through. Well, that's who God is. He says, I'm a friend of sinners. He became your friend. He's, we're, we're not just, we, we move on from servants to becoming his friends. So you've got to get to know who is in you. You've got to spend time with him. You've got to know his word. You've got to spend time on your knees. Verse 18. I'm doing so good, even though Reggie did go over a little bit. <laughs> if you're late for your appointment, see Reggie. <laughs> hey, if you work out enough, will your hair grow like that? Because I need that. If I, if I could work out, my hair would grow. It would be good. You all see me with a head like that? Oh, man. I've got an Elvis wig, but that's better. You know. Is that real? It's real. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's real. These are real twos. I wear things that are cover-up stuff. Verse 18. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with what? Voices loud and high. They were all tenors. <laughs> Wait. Tenors sing high. Y'all get that? Yeah. No, it went way over the all. What do you say? What's a tenor? <laughs> So they rose up early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. We have to have, if we're going to walk this walk and live this walk, we have to take our position in praise. What did, what did he start out? He said they, first they started out with their face 
toward the ground. They were worshiping God. Then God said, get up now. I want you to sing. I want you to sing loud. I want you to praise me. Jehoshaphat goes, you know what? This would be a good way to go into war. Let's go into the war praising God. Hmm? Y'all getting the hint? What the battle that you're facing? You need to wake up and you need to praise God. You need to put on some worship music. You need to sing. Uh, Drew said, I don't sing good. God doesn't care about how good you sing. He just, come, he just cares about what's in your heart, what's coming out from your, from your mouth. It's got to come from your heart first. Yeah. You got to start singing. You got to praise him. You got to, however it looks, start on your knees, but work your way up to this. Right. Amen? Amen? Positions of praise. Believe in the Lord your God, you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Did you know God wants us to prosper? Yes. He just does. Makes him look good. <laughs> but he doesn't want to just, we're not talking about financial, and that's, that could be part of it as long as you're a kingdom person. But he's talking about prospering in your health, <coughs> prospering in your mind, your attitude, prospering in your giftings prospering in your service he's called it to prosper now I want to close it up here verse 22 now when they began to sing into praise the Lord set am- when they began to sing into praise the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon Moab and Mount Seir who had come against Judah that was the three armies and they were defeated now this is how it happened for well, the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill them. So they started fighting within themselves. And that they, destroyed, uh, they destroyed them. And then when they had made an end to the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, remember God said, I want you to go and I want you to look. Get up and go. Take your army. Sing. Praise me. Come on. Come out and look over the mountain. Come on look over the wilderness. And they, and they came and they looked toward the multitude and There were dead bodies fallen on the earth and no one had escaped. The last thing which you see is we are positioned for power. P in power is our position in Christ. Because Jehoshaphat decided, I'm not going to let fear overtake me. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek God. I'm going to ask the prophets. I'm going to, we're going to fast. And we're going to praise the Lord. We're going to worship him because he was willing even to listen to the prophet. And then I can tell you some stories about us listening to the prophet. He said, I want to bless you to win this battle. See, so we're all in battles. We battle all the time. And we should win all the time. Because God is not a loser. And God is in us. He's He's. His victory. That's one of his names, his victory. His name is victory. Victory, say victory, victory. lives in me. Lives in me. Because, I because I am a child of the king. Of the king. Christ, lives Christ lives in me. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, say in Christ. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So when you leave here today, I don't want you to leave here with that old mindset. Well, I know I've got Jesus. I know that he lives in me. I want you to leave with the mindset, oh, I've got Jesus and he lives in me. And I have got authority. And even with that authority comes responsibility, but I will be faithful. Everything we do is by faith anyway, church. Everything we do is by faith. We should make a difference wherever we go, whatever we do, like the song says. We got a call the other day and found out that somebody we had gone to school with passed. Same age as almost identical age to my wife. Mary Lou actually grew up with her and she went to church with her. And uh, her husband is has the company that takes care of all of our copier machines and all that. Her mother died. They went to tell the daughter that the mom died and the daughter was dead. Same day. So we felt like, well, we definitely need to go to the funeral as a graveside service. Because we were in and we... We were part of their family for a while because our daughters were friends 
their daughter and our daughter. And I actually did their daughter's first wedding. And she was there at the funeral, of course, and her, grand, and her children, which would be Kay's grandsons, all got up in their little suits, and they took turns reading Proverbs 31. Different ages, but did a great job. And the end of the service, which I thought the, the pastor did a great job. My wife just went over to Robin, that was the daughter, and just sat down and put her hand on her knee. And she said, you know, seeing those boys up there, what a blessing that had to be to Kay, the grandmother, for those boys to stand up there and read the word of God at her, at her funeral. Well, our daughter, Tressie, in California, she stays in touch with Robin, and Robin... I don't know if she texted her or wrote her or called her. Did she call her? And she said this, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to brag on my wife. But when I brag on her, I'm bragging on Jesus in her. Because Robin said, I can't even tell you what it meant for your mom just to put her hand on me. She said, the peace, the peace that came over me immediately. And what she said, how it blessed her. You see, Christ in us. We should be able to go lay our hands, not just necessarily but on the sick, but the hurting. Yes. The down and out. We should be able to just go put our arms around them and maybe not say a word or maybe say exactly what the Holy Spirit tells you to say, but be Jesus because Jesus lives in us. Yes. You know, we've said it for years that when we walk in a room, it should change the atmosphere of a room. And I think we've, we've said it so long that we don't even believe it anymore because it's just, eh, we say it. It's a nice thing to say. We sing about it. But I think this morning what God really wants you to get is a new awareness of his presence in you and me. I need it. Because we get, we get in the to the cares of the world. We get into the, the slime and the sludge and all that, right? It, it, gets, it slings on us. We, we get some of that filth that gets thrown on us. And our, sometimes our first inclination is to sling back or to shout back instead of letting Jesus do what Jesus does back and love them, care about them, speak life over them. Would you stand this morning? I'd have our ministry team. I really, I'm not just saying because we didn't have anybody baptized this morning. I believe somebody's going to get saved today. Because maybe you're here this morning, you've always thought, hey, I'm a, I'm a Christian. But you've never allowed Jesus to actually come in and take up residence. And you sure never thought about I'm seated in heavenly places with him because your mind's always been on the world and what the world wants for you and you've, you've just given in to that because you've really never had a change. See, when Jesus comes in, I'm guaranteeing you something changes. These people that say, well, nothing to really change. I, I, gave my, I walked the aisle. I've been baptized. But, you know, I'm still living the way I've always lived. I still think the way I've always thought. Really, nothing's changed. Listen, you never got Jesus. I'm just being honest with you. You never got him because if you got him, even when you do fall into pornography or you fall into any other kind of sin because there's a million of them out there, you're not going to be liking it and you're not going to want to stay there. God is gracious enough to remind you, I love you so much. Come out of that. Come out of that bondage. I love you. You just don't have a clue how much I love you. And when you do that, you're, you're, you're grieving him because he's inside of you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, because the three are one, he lives in you. And maybe you've just, you come to the place, I'm not sure that I'm sure anymore. I, I don't even know if I were to die where I would spend eternity. And God says, today, if you were to die, you would spend eternity in hell because you don't know me. 
You know, there's a scripture that says, uh, Jesus said there's, there's going to be people who come to him and say, well, I cast out demons in your name. I did this in your name. I did that in your name. And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. I was never in you. I never became a part of you. Listen, it's not about religion. It's not about you having your name on some roll somewhere in some church or on some certificate somewhere. It's not about that. It's about who lives in you. And if he lives in you, you will live differently. And if you're not, you won't be very happy. So, Father in heaven, this morning, you've spoken. Your word is spoken. Your, your word has gone forth. Whether it was me or somebody else, it went forth in power because it's your word. Where's your position this morning? Are you in Christ? Are you in Christ? Is Christ in you? He's your only hope. He's my only hope. If you don't know Jesus this morning, the first invitation is for you. I'm going to invite you right now to step out and come. Step out and come right where you're at and come and find one of these fine people here in the front. They will share with you the plan of salvation, pray with you, talk. If you have questions, they will answer your questions. While every head's bowed and every eye closed, if that's you this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ, if, if today was the last day of your life, you don't know where you'd spend eternity, make that decision because you're here. It's a divine appointment. Jesus wants you today. If that's you, step out and come away. Step out and come. You aren't here by accident. You're not here by accident. Just pray, Christians. Pray, pray. Because there's struggles going on right now. There's a battle that's going on right now. Right now. You don't know Jesus. We want to pray with you. Maybe you don't even know what you want. But you would like somebody to pray with you. Just step out and come. Maybe you're really struggling with your identity in Christ. You're struggling. Maybe you think, well, I haven't heard God lately. He's not speaking to me. Listen, He always speaks to us. Just open His Word. He'll speak to you. Step out and come. We want to pray with you. Maybe this morning you've been saved. You've given your life to Jesus. And you've, you've never been water baptized. And I'm telling you, that's disobedience. You've never been water baptized. We pray that. I pray that you'd step out and come and speak to one of our ministry team at the front. And they'll get you scheduled. We'll get you lined up to get baptized. Maybe you've never been empowered by the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you'd want, man, I want to go the I want to, I want everything that God has for me. We want to pray for you this morning. Show me your glory, Lord. And there's some resistance here today, isn't there? Holy Spirit, move. Melt hearts right now, Lord. Melt hearts right now. Melt hearts right now, Lord. Melt hearts right now, Lord. Somebody hearing anything? What you hearing, Mimir? Um, I just feel like I'm hearing this guy's voice again, and I think it was the main voice that they don't see themselves. Is that for me? My wife said she just heard the name Princess. I mean, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, that means princess. That you just feel like you don't feel worthy, and you just need prayer. Step out and come. That's your name. Even if, you know, maybe you don't even identify with that, but hey, don't, don't push away prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Something going on in here today. It's different. It's 
just different. No, I don't. I, I think that's, there's there's a breakthrough. I think there's a breakthrough. Okay. Uh, let me get let me get the mic. Hold on. I just keep hearing the word. We did this Wednesday night, but I keep hearing this word reconnect. It's kind of like when you you unplugged your phone and it's not connected. But many of you are just, you feel stagnant. You feel, God, there's got to be more. And you just need to reconnect. If you need to reconnect to God, I want you to just come up here. Amen. If you felt stagnant, if you just felt bored with your walk with God, there's got to be people here that just need to reconnect. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if that's you, we want to pray for you. Amen. We just want to pray for you today. Amen. Don't be afraid. Don't even care what other people are looking at or anything. This is about your walk with Jesus. You may think God is like bad Wi-Fi, but he's not. You ever get frustrated because you're not getting connected? God will connect with you. He's just waiting for you to connect with him. He's always just waiting on us. He's always waiting on us. You need connecting. Come on, let's pray. I want to pray for you this morning. Nothing better than to be reconnected with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And if you had a bad, not bad diagnosis this week or you're battling something, you want, you want us to pray for you for healing. I, I know we got some healing testimonies. Where's Rose? Is she up here or is she downstairs? Rose? Come here, Rose. Turn that mic. I want you to tell them what happened to you last week after Don prayed for people. This has encouraged some people. Okay, I had been uh, struggling with COVID, I guess like the long hauler symptoms since October. And um, I was, I guess really I was having a battle of the mind and spirit as well. I knew that God had told me that it wasn't, that I wouldn't be healed, but when. And so I would hold on to everything. But when I would go walking from here to the end of the church, I'd be breathless. I re received people prayed over me. And after a while, I started feeling like maybe I don't have enough faith is what I felt, or maybe it's not God's will that I be healed. That's what it was, too. That's a lie. But I, I knew that all those things were, were not the truth. That's right. And I did know, and I kept being reminded, hey, I'm alive, number one, I made it through this, and number two, that God has always been faithful through everything. But anyhow, when uh, Don got up there and prayed and started, he called out exactly what I had just, the night before, cried to my husband about my frustrations and how I, I even went as far as saying how I felt worthless because I couldn't mop and sweep my house anymore. You know, I was raised up in those thoughts of this is what a woman does at home. And so anyhow, it was just a season that happened and uh, as we started receiving prayer Sunday, I stood up in faith and instantly I started coughing and like phlegm came up. And uh, that evening I was able, that afternoon, to be outside, ride bikes, and play, but I still didn't say anything because I was like, I need to make sure this is real. <laughs> so the next day, someone asked me if we would help them, and some, so we went, my husband and I had helped someone from the church at their house, and and it was a kind of a big job, and before you knew it, I, I was like, whew, I haven't ran out of air, and I had done like a lot of moving and resetting, and so um, praise God, though, because it's so much bigger. It's never about us when we're healed and set free of anything. Because as a result of this healing, uh, we did our the feed with Victor, uh, Feed My Sheep, mm -hmm. yesterday. And that's where I saw the difference mostly. Because the, the last one we did, I had to sit down, and I wasn't able to interact with anyone. But yesterday, I was able to pray with over 15, 20 people at, at MLK. Yes. And so many people, uh, some people even gave their lives to Christ there. Awesome. And so, uh, but so it was never about me. But uh, I see my sister Wanda back here. She and I have talked a lot, and she knew my struggle and what I was dealing with. And we were praying and praying and praying, but after a while, it's like I didn't pray because I don't want to be telling God the same thing. He knows what he's doing. That's but I'm right. here to tell you that if, just hold on to Jesus. Hold on to him. Like Pastor's message, there's nothing else that matters. If we can just touch the hem of, the, of you know, Jesus' feet, anything, we can be healed. Have hope.
No, you stay right there. Yeah, yeah and I'll take it. If you need healing this morning, would y'all come let Rose pay, pray for you? Let's pass it on. Let's pass it on. She prayed for several yesterday. They fed over 750 people yesterday at MLK. And so uh, what, a, what an outreach. So many churches are really catching the vision of what it is to be a kingdom church. And I'm so glad we're a part of the kingdom, aren't you? Anybody else need prayer for healing? Y'all just come gather around. Rose will pray for you. Kind of like Trey and Tracy prayed for marriages. and God's restoring marriages. He's healing families in our church. Anybody else need prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Maybe seated if you need to sit. Y'all be seated if you need prayer. Y'all just sit on the front row. Just, just tell the church. I don't think we're in a big hurry to leave. So I was so excited. Um, my husband and I, we teach a large group downstairs to the little kids. And yesterday was our weekend, or not yesterday, it was like yesterday. Last Sunday was our weekend to teach. And usually we have a very, like, structured schedule with the kids. It's easier that way with little kids to just have your pattern, right? Um, so we did our praise and worship like we normally do. And I was just like overwhelmed with the Holy Spirit. And I just felt like this need to just pray for the kids and their families and for healing. And it was like one of those fervent prayers. Like the little kids were like, hey, Cynthia, are you okay? And some of them came and hugged me. But I was just like excited. But just when Holy Spirit's working, like I'm a crybaby. I'm just always a crybaby. So we were praying and we were believing for healing. So for some of those parents that are up here still that – um you know, just healing needs to be taking place down there. I came home. I was so excited because we had missed on service, and I wanted to watch it. And when I came back and watched it, I realized that close time and proximity, John and I were praying for healing over the church. My and name. I was That's I awesome. got goosebumps That's when awesome. I was watching it. That's awesome. So prayer and uh, healing is happening. Amen. 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 Rose, where'd you go? You're not done, girl. I want you leaving me. These people are waiting for you to pray for them. Huh? All right, let's pray. Is prayer ready? Yes. Okay, hold on. Father, we thank you for your presence today. I thank you for the peace that passes understanding. Lord, may we leave this place knowing who you are in us and taking that authority with us as we go. Walking in that authority of no fear. Walking in that authority of faith. Trusting you today more than we trusted you yesterday. Believing your word and receiving your word more today than we did yesterday. Pressing in today more than we did yesterday. I thank you, Lord, that you've called this church body to prosper. So, Father, today I just speak prosperity over our body, our minds, our spirit, our physical bodies. Father, those that need, is there anybody here that needs a job? Anybody looking for a job? You know, stand up. Stand up if you need a job. Okay? Anybody else? Okay, Father in heaven, I thank you that you are our provider. And you've called us to be people that are active in, our, in the community. We're not just to, to hide ourselves away and 
but you've called us to be out in the, in, the, in the community, Lord, leading people to Christ. And sometimes we have an idea of what we want to do with our lives. We have an idea of what jobs that we want. But Lord, today I would just say that you would plant the thoughts in the minds of these that are looking for work or looking for a job or maybe even to change a position that you would begin to show them, speak to them, and show them the dream you have for them. You show them the job you have, the, even the, the career that you may have laid out for them, Lord. But they would understand today that it's about you more than it is about them. That the Christ in them is going to show them and speak to them and direct their steps. Open doors that only you can open, Lord, and slam shut the doors, even though we might want to kick them down. Slam shut and lock the doors, Father, that we're not supposed to walk through, even though it may look good, but it's not God. So I speak jobs, positions being filled today, Lord, that you're going to open up doors that only you can open for these that are looking, for these that are searching, for these that are trusting you. And I pray this in Jesus' name.